This morning I will be recording what I will always refer to as my very first hit. This song is called It's That Time Again. It's That Time Again was my very first original song that I showed in public. Um, it's three years old now and it was the very first song that won me my very first standing ovation. I'll never ever forget it. Three years ago, right, I went to the studio at college on a Friday afternoon in, in November and I said to Berwin, I want to write a Christmas song. Now, I'd already, co I'd already come prepared by this point. I actually knew what I wanted to write about. Um, essentially, giving out the message that, you know, Christmas is here, it's that time again, hence the name of, of the song. And we already had ideas, and I, we just flowed so well. We wrote that song in under an hour, and I was busy arranging it, and I recorded it for the first time a week later, and we released it. We sold 20 copies at college, I sold all of them, we made about 75 quid, I think. <laughs> but uh, not bad for someone starting out, huh? It's that time again For all the little children And their smiles again Like angels straight from heaven It's that time again So now three years down the line I feel it's time to re-record it again with a much wonderful lusher arrangement um, and a new setting. Um, it should be very good. It should be very good. The beauty about revisiting old songs is that you're able to improve on them and you know search for rumors of improvement. I see songs as like a work of art, or like a big stone that you're just chipping away at and um, seeing what improvements that can, can be made around the edges or even like vocal techniques or even arrangement techniques. I think this song will showcase what I can do as a performer, as an artist, as a singer-songwriter, as a composer and an arranger. One of the things that I cherish the most about what I do is that not only am I a singer-songwriter, I'm a composer and I'm also an arranger. Not many people can do all those things at once. So to have all those gifts in me, I'm very blessed by it. As it's something that I, do, I don't take for granted at all. Um, I love that I'm, I'm able to arrange for myself. When you see people like Frank Sinatra, who worked with Nelson Riddle, Quincy Jones, Billy May, all of my top three favorite arrangers, I pick up these little riffs that they do, these little tricks that they do individually, and I try and build it up to make my own sound, which is what I love. This one is more lighter than the others that I've written. It's more of a Christmas song, it's a, it's a romantic song. It's very influenced by the arrangements of a guy called Gordon Jenkins. Now, Gordon Jenkins did a lot of work with Frank Sinatra. He also did a lot of work with Ella Fitzgerald and Louis Armstrong. Gordon, are you ready? At the tables of Bedford Land, the place where Dizzy dwells. Gordon Jenkins was very famous for his lush string arrangements. There were, his string arrangements helped define like the 1950s in terms of like romantic music and just laid back light music. Um, I just love his style of arranging. Um, so this is like kind of like my dedication to him as an arranger and the influence he had on me as an arranger. When it comes to songwriting, I'm very much inspired by the wonderful work, the vast work of the American, Great American Songbook, with songs such as um, Blues in, in the Night and uh, The Tender Trap and many others, songwriters such as Cole Porter, Irving Berlin, Johnny Mercer, Harold Arlen and so many other people. 
you know. But one songwriting team that stands out for me is the legendary songwriting duo of Sammy Khan and Jimmy Van Heusen. Now, as we all know, they all worked with Sinatra on many of his hit records, including Come Fly With Me, Love Is The Tender Trap, um, Come Dance With Me, Only The Lonely, and a whole host of, a whole host of others. Sammy Khan and Jimmy Van Heusen wrote so well, and their lyrics and their music was put together so well and so finely timed and so it was, they put a lot of thought and they made it they made it look so effortless the way they wrote together they wrote so many hit songs together and uh, that's where I kind of draw my influence from when it comes to you know this type of songwriting I think it's very important to sing because you enjoy singing. But when it comes to certain songs, like ballad, like slow songs or ballad songs or, or even up-tempo songs, sing them with conviction. You know, there's no point getting up, in there, up there on the mic and just singing it, you know, half-hearted, you know, because you can tell on the recording and it reflects. The audience will pick on them straight away and then that's it. So there's, there's, there's no point in just singing it half-hearted. You've got to sing it with, with, with emotion, sing it with, with conviction, sing it with, sing it with love. Like, I, I love being in the studio. I love performing on stage, you know. A lot of people don't get this opportunity. Like, back in the 50s, going into a studio was, was a luxury. Now, I, so I sometimes record from, from my own bedroom. But um, on times like this, you know, recording one of my first songs, it's just good. this has to be a studio environment. So I'm really excited and uh, I just can't wait to get started. I've got to get changed though, I'm not wearing this. <laughs> you mad, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Paul Jones. I'm here working today with Marvin the Jazz Man on his up and coming jazz release. Well, how do I look? Good? Not bad. Not bad, huh? Well, it's the best I could do for now. I couldn't fit anything else in my bag. Well, it's that time again. Let's get started. Da 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 da, it's that time again. Alright, you good to go, man? <laughs> 